Hi, my name is Avinash, and I'm the author of the books Web Analytics 2.0 and Web Analytics in Our Day. I'm very excited to present this webinar about Web Analytics to all of you. Um, in this uh, particular video, I want to cover the, the incredible opportunity that exists in using data online in solving key business problems, um, as well as outline for you some of the more specific things that you can do once you do start using web analytics and sort of aspirationally all of the other more wonderful things that are over the horizon that you'll be able to take advantage of once you start creating a truly data-driven business. Now, why would you want to do web analytics? A lot of people ask me this question, and honestly, it surprises me because if you're not wanting deeply, profoundly desiring to be data-driven, then really there is no honest way to survive in the world that we live in today as all different channels come together and online continues to dominate growth for companies and growth for nonprofits, as a matter of fact. But let me crystallize why you should invest in web analytics in a very simple way. When you take out an ad in a magazine and try and measure its success, in this case, an ad for Chevy Malibu, all of the measures for success are interpretive or proxy driven. For example, you take out an ad in the Time magazine and the best proxy you have for measuring success is the number of subscribers the magazine has. You have absolutely no idea how many people might have opened the magazine, how many people might have bothered to even see your gorgeous little ad and and much less you would know how many people then went to a dealership and might have purchased uh, the product that you're selling in this magazine ad but but if you think about it when you take out that exact same ad in this case on Google or Yahoo or Microsoft or AOL or or any other property in the world the ad that shows up right here at the very top it does not require you to use your faith to measure success you can use use data to measure success because you can measure exactly how many people saw the ad, you can measure how many people clicked on the ad, how many people interacted with the ad, and finally, if people do come to your website as a result of this ad, you're able to measure how many people customized a car, set up an appointment at the dealership, downloaded a brochure, and, and all of the outcomes that are available for that single ad that you took. So the measurement of success rather than being interpretive and proxy driven is direct, it is specific, and it is scalable. And I cannot think of a better, more powerful and profound reason for you to use web analytics than that it moves you away from making business decision based on faith and what you believe in to shifting to using data and bringing a massive amount of accountability to the processes that you're executing for your business. It behooves us to cover the definition of web analytics. So when we when we say web analytics, what do you mean? And in writing my second book, I had created this definition. And the definition quite simply says, web analytics is the analysis of qualitative and quantitative data from your website and the competition to drive continual improvement of the online experience of your customers and prospects, which translates into desired outcomes online and offline. And let me just highlight a couple of different things in this definition. Now, the very first thing uh, to, that is important for you, all of us to realize is that we're talking about qualitative as well as quantitative data. Most of the time when people think about web analytics, they think about all the clicks that we collect on the website. And while that continues to be one of the larger sources of data we analyze, uh, web analytics is also surveys and lab usability testing and follow me homes. And the various other methodologies we can use to understand why people behave the way they do on our website. It also includes analyzing your competition. One of the most amazing things about the web is how much data you have access to for all of your competition. Uh, for any given website in the world, you can use tools like Compete and Trends for Websites and others to try and understand how many people went to my competitor's website, how long did they stay, and what did they do, so that you can learn from 
from the analysis of data for, for your competitor and improve your business. Also, it's about improving things every single day, not opening tools once in a while and, and, and trying to see if you can find something to change, but actually improving things every single day in small bits. And we're going to cover this in this video. And finally, it's about both online and offline. While the name web, the word web exists in the name web analytics, web analytics is very much about understanding the offline impact of all of the online activities that you do on your store, on the phone center, on on sort of um, other existence you have, like a call center you might have offline. But it also means that web analytics is great at understanding the online impact of your offline activities such as television campaigns and radio and magazine ads and etc etc so it's important to realize that web analytics is not simply about analyzing the clicks on of people who come to your website but it's a much more expansive view of qualitative and quantitative competitive data in order to improve your online existence some people also think that it's really, really hard to get going. And, and I think this is one of the biggest, biggest wrong beliefs that people have. If I want to start by tracking a website, in this case, let's say my blog, Occam's Razor, all I have to do is go to a web analytics tool. I could start with a free tool called Google Analytics or a free tool called Yahoo's Web Analytics, both really wonderful tools. I would simply open an account. I would copy this code from this website from the Google Analytics or Yahoo Analytics website. Literally, I copy these few lines of code. I go back to my website. I open the footer file of my website. As you can see clearly, it's in this case, I'm using a PHP-driven website, footer.php. I paste the code into this file that I have on my website. There you go. Now you can see those exact lines of code pasted into this, into this file. And boom, I sing happy birthday right? 75% of the data that you will need in order to make decisions using Clickstream tools can be gotten just by doing these three simple steps on your website. And, and it gorgeous data flows in. And you might perhaps be thinking, well, what can I get for a few lines of code, right? Just a few reports? No, that's a surprise. Here are all of the reports that you can get from this particular tool, uh, Google Analytics in this case. And, and I'm going to hide with with a little bit transparently white all the data you won't get if you do what I just said. And notice the massive amounts of data you can get about visits and locations and languages and mobile traffic and page views and sources and keywords and search engines and goals and everything you can get. So I hope that I've answered the question web analytics and why, right? Web first, analytics second, why third? You want to do web analytics because it increases accountability for the efforts you're going to put on the web. You want to do web analytics because it lowers risk and enables you to fail faster than anybody else so that you win at, and at a greater magnitude than was ever possible. And you should do web analytics because it is one of the most powerful business drivers that will lead to a long-term success for your business. I have yet to meet a single business that is going to win on the web without having a well-defined web analytics process and strategy. Thank you, and I wish you all the very best.